Good morning, lovely people, and welcome to another day in the life of a witch vlog. Today I'm taking you along to do some snow magic in order to make peace with 2020 and bring in some hope for 2021. And in the first time for forever, I do have a babysitter. Yay! So I can actually venture out and get a frolic in the first and probably last snow of this year. But let's look what we have planned for today. Our topics today will all be very magical and revolve around the Yuletide or the 12 days of Christmas or how we call it in Bavaria, the Raunechte. And if you don't know what that is, you might want to head over to my lovely friend Alina's channel, The Art of Nature Germany. She's also from Bavaria and we're collaborating on this video together and showing you more about the magical customs and oracles that come with this time of the year. Okay, but now let's get going. to take the chance to do some snow magic today since we finally have a nice white blanket here and snow as the frozen element of water is actually quite versatile in magic and you can do various kinds of spell with it you can do freezer spells you can do banishing you can do uh, cleansing basically whatever you can think of so what i want to do today is to let go of some things and that's basically what i took away from 2020 and i think we all have learned <laughs> from this year in some ways and um, for me it was especially the term around expectations i feel we always have so many goals and plans and expectations towards ourselves and how sh life should look like or be like and well this year i think in in some little or big ways all our lives have been derailed by what was happening in the world or is still happening in the world personally i do also have to learn to not always be so rigid with my expectations so frozen but to just let them go um, be a little bit more flexible with a couple of things and maybe also give myself a little bit of grace at times. So we're now going to find a nice spot and how that little nature spell works is that I will write that word that I want to let go of in the snow and really say goodbye to it and visualize it that with the rising sun when the snow will melt away and transform that ice and that snow into fluid water again it will take it away with it so to say
So I'm finally back home and I am frozen to the bone. So I thought it would be a very good opportunity to warm up in my favorite way with some freshly baked goods. And I was inspired by the snow ever so slightly falling and I wanna have something dusted with powdered sugar. And of course, I love to bake seasonally as well. So today I have a Dutch treat for you. It's called Olibolle. So it's like oil bowls, oil rolls, whatever you want to call them, which does sound a bit disgusting. So they're basically just like these deep fried, delicious balls of dough. And I put some apples in mine and raisins and cinnamon and they are great. <laughs> and they're super tasty and they go great with coffee. They are traditionally eaten for out and new, so for yeah. New Year's. But yeah, why not make them today? We're so close to the end of the year anyway. And I am really excited to have them again. So to all my Dutch viewers, if you have any secret tips and tricks or recipes um, that differ from mine, please let me know. I always love to improve my, <laughs> my cooking in any way I can. And I also want to take this little chance to thank you all for the postcards and letters and Christmas presents and um, just the outpour of love and appreciation that I received and also Tony Lou received. <laughs> Thank you! And it really, really, really brought so much joy into my days. So I just wanted to say, if you want to send me something, please also include your address if you want to, because then I can send a little thank you back, which I would really love to do. But for now, let's get cooking. Everything is really covered in white outside as well as inside so I had to change my shirt but it was totally worth it so good anyway so I was just getting some wood to make it nice and toasty and warm inside for the evening as you're not supposed to leave the house at night time <laughs> and that has to do with the Raunechte that we're celebrating at the moment 12 days of Christmas they're sometimes referred to in the English language or Yuletide. And today I want to share more of the ancient old traditions that we have here in southern Germany around these magical days. As I mentioned before, the Art of Nature Germany 
also made a video about this topic and today I want to share the oracles with you, the traditional oracles, a bit more about the specific days and also what you can do and how you can craft your prediction oracle or a mandala for self-reflection for the coming year. But first let's see what Alina can tell us about the term Raunichte and where it derives from. The Raunechte begin in the night from December 24 to December 25. Or at least it's the official beginning in our place here in southwest Bavaria. There are some regional differences of the beginning and duration, but here they start on Christmas Eve. It is a time of introspective, reflection and preparation for the next year. The word origin of Raunechte is probably the German word Rauch, which means smoke. And Nächte means nights, so it maybe translates to smoke nights. I say maybe because there are different theories for the word origin of Raunechte. But the one with Rauch or Smoke seems to be the most logical to me, as it's a widespread tradition to smoke cleanse the house during that time. People did that and still do it with all different kinds of herbs. And I took spruce needles because I like the smell of them. So now you know that and if you want to know more, don't forget to check out her video linked above and down below. Let's dive a bit deeper into the traditions. So the Raunechte were of course a time where it was time to smoke cleanse your house and it was even more a time for Oracle for the coming year. As people lived off agriculture and the rural efforts, a lot of the Oracles revolve around harvest, around animal health, around health in the family, and of course all the things that kept people busy throughout times, love, relationship, death, birth, fertility. So each of the 12 days is connected to one month in the coming year that corresponds to. So on that day you would do oracles to get some more insight about the coming month. And we have a lot of weather oracles where we would look at the weather on that day and then make our prediction for the next year. For example, if the night is very clear and cold, then the summer would be very hot. Um, there are many, many different rules about that. And if you want to more in depth about the folklore. So apparently, we're in the middle of flight training right now. Great, grand, perfect timing live next to a US military base, so they do cause quite some noise <laughs> at times. Another very common traditional oracle this time of the year is the animal oracle. In certain nights of the Raunechte it is said that you can hear animals talk if you do certain things, if you give them a bowl of milk, if you listen to them at midnight, if you walk into the stables and then usually they can predict things like um, your death, um, the death of a loved one, or just in general tell you all the secrets that have been happening. There are also oracles around plants. So you would, for example, in the winter bring a twig or branch in, and depending on the number of blossoms that it would carry, that would mean then um, fertility, or the number of potential love interests, or the number of kids you will have. So each day has its own oracle, and if you wanna know more about the very, very specific traditions and also the mythology behind it um, because most of the figures that appear during the Raunechte, like the demon kind figures, are actually linked to Germanic mythology. Then you can go over on my Patreon because I made two podcasts about that where I give you the full details. Two more traditional oracles would be the Rune Oracle or um, one that's called Haferleben, which would 
mean as much as lift the cup um, that you would do with your entire family. You would put different things underneath it and then lift the cup and see what it would deliver. And it's also said that what you dream during the Raunechte will actually come true. So Dream Oracle is also a really, really big part of that time. I also posted more little tidbits throughout the month of December over on my Instagram so you can read some fun stories there as well and their pagan origins. Nowadays a lot of people are still celebrating the Raunechte and use it for introspective and as a time to really find peace and plan out the next year. So traditional methods of divination now would be tarot, some people use runes, some people use oracle cards. But today I want to show you how you can make a little mandala, like a little painting where you collect all the different experiences and outcomes from your divination practices, from your introspective or from your dreams and you gather it there and make it into this kind of collage for the next year so you have a, like a rough guideline on what you could focus on in every month. So first we want to start by drawing out a wheel of year. I draw 13 circles because I consider the Raunechte the 13th month. That's also what it's sometimes referred to and it's a time between the years. It's neither here nor really there. In our beliefs it's really a time where the here and the other world is completely mingled. So like there is the wild hunt going about and there are ghosts and demons um, roaming around in the streets. So it's, it's a very special time of the year. So I use my rune stones for every month to get one word, like one guiding word, one main theme for that month. And I find rune stones are a good thing because they're very to the point, they're very clear in their meaning. So I like to have that there. And what I do next is I draw an oracle or a tarot card for the day where I see what predominant energies I might be able to focus on. So that is more work related or relationship related, you know, like something that I maybe in that month could really look into on how to better that in my entire life. So I'm gonna write that in for each month too. For each day I will try to do a different walk to a different um, area in where I live, in my town. And I usually don't plan that out, I just see where the mood of the day leads me and for me personally, it can lead me to those like power spots. Maybe to a little birch grove or to a part in the forest or to a little well or I sit next to the river and I let that inspire me. I let that nature that that day brought to me inspire me and see if I can see something maybe in how the birds fly or the elements that are there like the water that's flowing or a leaf that's falling in how I can interpret that for something valuable for the next year. I gonna paint that in as a little symbol, just something that reminds me of it. Or maybe I write even the, the name of the spot that I went to in it. I do not always remember my dreams, but if I do remember them, I will do a little drawing for every month that just kind of gives me the gist of that dream or that feeling that I got from it. And I mean, you can put whatever in there. You can work with color magic, you can work with meditation, you can work with other forms of divination, really whatever brings you joy and whatever helps you gain more insight for your planning for the next year. So feel free to do that mandala however you want and it's just for your personal use. You can then cut it out and put it somewhere, hang it somewhere, put it in your book of shadows or your grimoire or whatever, you know, that the next year you have just something to focus on, maybe for your spiritual growth or your personal growth or if you do believe in, in actual divination, then maybe also as a guide to what awaits you. All right, and that was it on my part. So if you now wanna head over to Elite Nina's channel please do so and she will also be sharing another really really cool tool that you can use for the next year and I wish you a happy ending of 2020 and a much much better 2021. Bye!